Chum is dragging me out to see something that he says we absolutely have to have for the shop. And I don't know what it is exactly, but I've never seen him this excited. What the hell is this thing? This is Robosaurus. It's our 31 ton, 45 foot, basically a transformer that eats cars, eats airplanes. We could actually lift your bikes up if you'd like. You touch my bike, I'll kill you. <laughs> okay, well, we'll leave the bike alone. I've got the guys from the pawn shop coming down to look at my one and only Robosaurus. I bought Robosaurus at an auction. I made a business out of it, but it's time for me to get rid of this and look at raising the venture capital to do something else that I have a great idea for. So, Chum, you think this is appropriate for my pawn shop? You'd never have to tow a car again. And the wrong hands? I bet this thing could cause a lot of damage. I mean, these guys must have one hell of an insurance policy. I don't know what my idiot friend told you, but I just own a pawn shop. I mean, there's... You can't really expect me to buy this thing. It is a money-making machine. It can be rented out. It can be leased out. We do special events. It can do bar mitzvahs. It can do uh, big, giant demolition derbies. 25000 bucks is a day you can make from this thing when you put it on the, uh, on the road. This machine can perform a bar mitzvah, huh? <laughs> I mean, you might as well just show me more about it. What do we got going here? We got 24,000 pounds of crushing power in these claws, so we can rip apart a car, we can tear it apart, pull the roof off, whatever you want to do. Check out this cockpit. You look, look through this front window, and that's where the pilot sits. You're strapped into a seat, your feet are on pedals, your arms lock into devices, so when you move your arms, the robot's arms move, all your fingers are in double-sided switches. So when you squeeze your finger and thumb like this, 24,000 pounds of crushing power. We shoot air cannons out, we have confetti, we can do fireworks. We actually could launch missiles from this thing. What power is this thing? Well, there's a 500 horsepower turbocharged diesel engine, drives four hydraulic pumps. Housed right in here are two 20-gallon propane tanks. That's what gives Robo his fire. And the power is back here. I can think of a few ways to hurt myself in this thing. <laughs> My dad and the old man would kill me if I even considered buying this thing. But, I mean, they also love to make money. I was completely ready to walk away, but when he said this thing could make 25 grand a day, it got my attention. This thing generates money. 25,000 a day, huh? Do the math and you can thank me later. Well, let's fire this thing up and see what it does, man. All right, All right let's go. All right. Leave it to Chum to show me the biggest, most impractical thing I've ever seen. On the other hand, I mean, it has a lot of value because it's famous. So if it's in good working condition, I'll make an offer. Well, let's fire this thing up and see what it does, man. All right, all right let's, let's go. All right. It takes a second for him to get it going, and after it's going, guys, it, it'll do all the tricks. Can it do a backflip or anything? Well, it can't actually get in the air, but that's a great idea. It, it is amazing what it can do. Huh. It is an engineering marvel. Are you ready, Big Hoss? This is going to be crazy. <laughs> Robosaurus might be big and strong, but if it came any closer to my bike, I might have kicked his ass. All right, what do you say we attack that car? I want to show you the immense power of All right, let's see the car. There we go. car in half? <laughs> That's crazy. Are you impressed? Oh, I'm impressed. I'm not cleaning it up. There you go. 
I gotta admit, if I didn't expect it to do all that. We're ready to make a deal. <laughs> Honestly, man, how much are you asking for this thing? Well, you know, I, we can do a bargain today for about one million bucks. Holy <laughs> did he just use the M word? As in six zeros? And by the way, if you do it now, I'll throw in the tractor trailer. Hey, he told us he was a transformer that turns into a tractor trailer. So we'll throw so that he in. He lied. There. He doesn't turn into a tractor trailer. <laughs> well, he needs to be towed. He's not a transformer, man, without that piece. <laughs> I mean, the Robosaurus is awesome, and I'm sure there's somebody out there that would love to buy it. It's just way too much money to risk. I mean, it could easily end up bankrupting the shop. It, it was very cool, guys, but I have to admit, a million bucks is a little out of my budget. Well, I guess we gave it a shot, and I really appreciate your time. It was a very, very nice meeting you. Thank appreciate you. it. You know, I thought they were really interested when they came out. I know the $1 million is high, but I did expect them to counteroffer. I thought these guys liked one-of-a-kind items, and this is one-of-a-kind. A million is so far out of the question. I mean, we're not even on the same planet. Hell, we're not even in the same galaxy. What do you think? Do you think I'm really going to buy this thing for a million bucks? So I'm in the middle of the desert in search of a tank for the shop's lot. Apparently, there's an authentic Sherman tank for sale that was used, get this, in Iwo Jima during World War II. It doesn't get much better than that. With that and the flamethrower, it's going to be an explosive day. So are we close? Almost there. Uh, five more minutes out. That's it right there. That's the Sherman. Wow. All right, we're here. Look at that tank. Holy <laughs> That is amazing. The tank the guys are looking at right now is an M4A3 Sherman. What makes this tank special, it's the only Sherman tank in private hands that was actually used in the Pacific Theater. Real Marines jumped into during Iwo Jima, and now they can relive that history as well. This is incredible. So this thing actually saw action in Iwo Jima. This one did. It did see action. It was knocked out three times in the first 24 hours. Um, it was finally taken out of service when they hit the turret at the turret bearing. And uh, we met the gentleman who had to back it out. He's still alive today. I look at it, I just find it incredible because, I mean, it's from Iwo Jima. I mean, it's like when they raised the flag on Mount Suribashi, I mean, it's probably the most iconic photo of all of World War II. Well, guys, there's a major problem with this tank. It's made out of wood. You know what that's for? The Japanese had magnetic mines, sticky mines, that they would run up and stick to the side of a tank. So the Marines had to improvise and put wood paneling on the side and on the wheels of the track. So these guys were figuring this out and improvising as best they could to protect themselves. OK. And everything works inside? Every Everything works. How much you want for this thing? Um, I'm looking to get a million and a half. OK, but we get to drive it? You can drive it, and you can shoot it. It's pretty damn cool. Um, you need to go call Corey. Tell him to come down here. He doesn't want, he's not going to want to miss this, OK? All right. Can you, like, point it into a direction so I'm in a straight line? You can do that, too. <laughs> the guy's asking $1.5 million. And that kind of money, I'm thinking about it. But before I do anything, I'm going to have to fire it. Wish me luck. <laughs> you got it. No worries. Wait, not that mirror. Nice job, Rick. The door of that car was up for like four seconds. Oh, man. Th this has been the greatest day of my life, by the way. Not when you were born, Corey. No. <laughs> this is much better than that, I'm sure. You did a good job, Pops. Oh, look at that car. 
What do you think, Alex? I mean, it is what it is. It speaks for itself. Shermans are the most desired American tank from World War II. It runs well. It fires well. It's got historical provenance from Iwo Jima. There is one that we know of that sold in the last year that wasn't documented to being at any major battle in the World War II, and it was sold for 1.2 million. So at one and a half million, I, I think that's a fair price. Okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> I'll meet you at the Humvee. You know, I mean, when me and Alex started discussing me buying a tank, I was thinking I could get into something like this for a couple hundred grand uh, because they made like 50,000 of these, right? A, a little more than that. Yeah, and um, it's amazing. It's got amazing history. Everything about it, it's absolutely great. But um, it's so out of the ballpark for me. <laughs> But I really, really appreciate the day. It's been an unbelievable day. At least I got a flamethrower robbed in. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, thanks, man. Amazing day. This is like one of the greatest days of my life, dude. I drove a tank and I blew something up with a tank. Today, I got a call from a guy wanting to sell an airplane. I've done really well with airplanes in the past, so me and the old man are on our way to check it out. <laughs> so this is it, huh? This is it. This thing is definitely cool. I uh, called the pawn shop to see if they were interested in buying my 1939 model V77 Stinson fabric covered antique airplane. I bought it to resell, and if I sell it here in Las Vegas, I don't have to transport it all the way back home to South Carolina. Tell me about this thing. They were used for personnel carriers back in World War II. Okay. This particular one was sent to Great Britain. The guy that I bought it from, he actually painted back the colors and paint scheme that the British actually had on it. So you got all the parts for it? I've got everything. Okay. This plane is really cool. While there might not be a huge market out there for antique airplanes, the people who do collect them are willing to spend a lot of money. Is this that new Seekonite or? Uh, no, but it is a non-cotton material, though. Looks exactly. a little rough, son. Yeah, it's not what you'd call pretty at the moment. I'll be honest with you, it looks like it's been rode hard and put up wet. <laughs> well, it, uh, I don't think it's been rode too hard. So you mind showing us the inside? That'll be fine. Uh, uh, this interior has definitely seen its better days. It needs paint, it needs wood, it needs fabric, it needs carpet. Does it start? Well, if the fuel tanks are on it, it probably, I'm sure it will. Okay, have you started it yet? No. Nothing about my job is easy. I got a really cool plane here, but I have no idea what it's gonna cost to fix. And if I do buy it and I start fixing it up, the littlest thing can be the difference between making a lot and losing a lot. How much were you looking to get out of it? Um, I'd like to get 60,000 out of it. Uh, well, you know what? Let me call someone in to take a look at this thing. That'll be fine. If the numbers work, the numbers work. Good okay. Deal. No problem, man. I really want to restore this thing. I know it has huge potential, but the main goal for me and the old man is to make money. So before we make an offer, I got to bring someone in to help me sort this out. Wow, Stinson Reliant. That's a big <laughs> plane. <laughs> I'm a commercial pilot here in Las Vegas. You guys at the pawn shop call me when they have any questions regarding planes, parts, uh, restoring planes, anything regarding aviation, they give me a call. It's a uh, monowing radial engine fabric airplane. This was uh, built as a personnel carrier back in the 30s, but then they were dragged into use as trainers during World War II. These airplanes were lent to the British under the uh, Lend-Lease program during World War II so that they can train their pilots how to fly their own airplanes. What are your concerns with this airplane? Uh, well, before I even make an offer on it, I just want to know if it's going to be worth getting restored. I just don't know how much work's got to go into it. So you mind if we uh, take a look at it? Absolutely not. Go right. ahead. Appreciate it. This will start with the engine first. Um, how long has this engine been sitting for? Uh, it was overhauled uh, about four years ago. Has it been run in the last four years? or? Yeah, it has been run in the last four years. Uh, uh, not flown, but static. It's been out of annual. This airplane hasn't been flown in four years, which means it hasn't had its annual inspection. A lot of stuff can happen in four years. Everything you could ever imagine, birds nesting in corrosion. 
Do you think that it's uh, in airworthy condition, fabric-wise? That fabric's been on there since 1980. Would you fly it in condition it is in? No, I would not. That's why it's on the trailer. Okay, so it has to be recoded then. Mind if we have a look inside? No, that's fine. Ooh. Um, it's a beautiful airplane. Could take a lot of work, though. Okay. So what do you think it'll cost me to fix this thing up? At least 60 grand, just rough ballpark guesstimate. Okay. There's no way that you're going to put that kind of money into it. If you do, heads up, you're getting robbed. Are you looking at probably 20 grand for the interior? I haven't even looked at the engine, but it could be up to 35 grand for the engine. At least 25 grand for the exterior. And once you peel that back, who knows what the hell you're going to find. I can almost guarantee you there's going to be some kind of corrosion. You're not going to find that. I already cr crawled through it and looked. Well, corrosion can set in in three to four days, and this thing's been sitting for four years. You want somebody just to go through it tooth and nail. All right, so, I mean, best case scenario is to restore is like 50, 60 grand? Best case scenario. Okay. On a lucky day. I disagree with the expert's opinion that it's a money pit. It's anything but that. The numbers he's using are just completely absurd. If I did restore it, how much do you think I can get out of it? They can go anywhere from 100 to 150. Well, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it. Yep, absolutely. Okay. I really like this plane. It would be a fun project for me and the old man, but I have to protect myself and my business. So how much are you asking for it? If I were going to cut it loose today, I, I would take 55. I mean, quite honestly, I'll give you 25 grand for it. That's not, we're not even in the ballpark. The, the numbers just don't work for me. I mean, they, I mean, they would work at 25 because if everything goes to hell, I can get my money back. All right, right, right. I understand. You know? If I took 25 for it, uh, I'd be going in the hole for what I just paid for it. Okay. I really appreciate you letting me take a look at it, but I mean, the, the deal's not here. Right, that's right. It's not here for us. That's okay. Fine. All right, well, thanks for showing it to me. Our bombs, we won't be fixing this thing up, but spending more than 25 grand would put way too much risk on the shop. If something goes wrong, we have to be able to get out of bad deals, at least break even. And with this, I don't think it can happen. A call just came in from a guy selling a boat. It sounded cool, but no one else was around, so I just decided to go check it out myself. Uh, plus you had a boat. It is a boat. Does it float? No, it is a float. I thought a boat floats. This boat floats in parades. I'm confused. Shiver me timbers. I called the guys down at the pawn shop today to check out my street legal pirate ship. I own a company, and we specialize in making these boats for bachelor parties, parades, and rallies. I'd like to sell it today because we'd like to start our next bigger one. I'm asking 250000 Why don't you come on aboard? All right. What do you think? It's pretty sweet. Can you show me all the features? I'll show them to you. We've got those black pipes. They pump out all the fog you could ever want. It's got the front stage. You come down the stairs, you got center stage. We've got a wet bar here. And then when we go to the top right up here, we've got lasers that come out of there that paint the whole floor green and red. We got a big screen TV on the back that films the entertainment, whatever's happening in the boat, so the people behind you can enjoy what's happening. Well, that might be dangerous if I was on here partying. It very well might be dangerous. I believe that. Is this legal to drive on the street? Absolutely. It's got license, registration, inspected. It'll go 60 miles an hour down the highway. We took a one-ton GMC chassis from a Chevy truck, took the body off, put a steel substructure underneath it, and we covered the whole thing with 100% African mahogany. It's got a 350 Chevy carbureted motor pushing about 300 horsepower. All right. You think I can take a picture and send it to my boss? Absolutely. A pirate ship, you can actually drive 50 miles an hour on the highway. This is awesome. Let's take it for a spin while I'm waiting for him to reply back. You got it, brother. Let's go. Chum's phone just keeps on going straight to voicemail. I'm sure it's all right, dude. Here, I'll text him. Don't buy the float. Send. Here, everything will be fine. Don't worry, I'm sure he's not going to buy it. He doesn't have any money on him. But he's an idiot. Woo! I'm on a boat! Sup, ladies? I feel like captain of a ship right now. It's a good look for you. <laughs> I can't wait to show this to everyone. If I can make a deal, Rick will think I'm the man. Pretty awesome. Right on. You like it? I do. Uh, what are you trying to get for it? $250,000. <laughs> Two forty. 
I'm thinking you could rent this boat out for a couple grand a night. I mean, it's a gold mine. I'm pretty sure Rick will want it. I can give you a hundred thousand bucks. Man, my bottom dollar is 190, 190,000. That's giving it away. 190,000 is giving it away. Giving it away. Um, I don't think my boss would let me spend that much. That's it? Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I had a good time, though. It was fun. Well, I'm glad you had a good time, but I'm driving you all over this place. Why don't you call your boss? I could do that. Let's see. Well, he, he might want it. Do it. It looks like he texted me already. Do not buy the float. That was Rick, my boss. He said not to buy the float in a text message. Huh. That's it? Yeah. I'm going to have to pass. Now well, that's bull. Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. I can't believe Rick didn't want this pirate ship. If it was up to me, I would have bought it. We've never had anything in the shop like it before. Earlier, a guy brought in an armored vehicle from World War II. It looks awesome, but I'm not sure if it's the real thing. So I'm having my buddy David check it out. Hey, David, how's it going? Hey, guys. This is why we came by. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the owner of Army Trucks, Inc. We supply military vehicles to motion pictures, TV commercials. This is a 1941 uh, Scout car, it looks like. They're made from the late 30s to about 1944. They use these to go ahead of the tanks to scout out the enemy. So Rick, what are your concerns? It looks like a lot of stuff on it's been replaced, so we, we basically have a 1941 body here. When I'm analyzing a truck like this, I basically uh, look for originality, I look for obvious flaws. Wow. Guys, I see some numbers here, which lend some authenticity to the vehicle. I'm gonna keep looking. Well, quarter inch armor, that's good. Let's pop the hood. Definitely the correct hood, but that's not correct. Modernized. Yeah, that's what's concerned me. Like, everything underneath looks modernized. So, Rick, you want the good news or the bad news? Give me the bad news. Well, the bad news, this thing is pieced together. OK. The only thing original is probably the first foot of this truck. And this looks like an M3 chassis, but everything after that underneath looks like a modern pickup truck. So what's the good news? The good news is somebody put a lot of time and effort and money into making this thing to look like this. As a vehicle collector myself, it does have the wow factor. So what's a wow factor worth? A pristine one of these is worth about 100,000, an original one. This, I think, up to 20,000. OK. All right, thanks. It's not an original 1941 Army truck, but it still looks badass. There's definitely a market for military reproduction vehicles, so I'm still interested in buying it. I came here thinking one thing, now I have to think about something completely different. So uh, before we talk money, let me take this thing for a spin, okay? Sounds good to me. All right, you guys ready to go? Let's go. Let's get some wow factor going. <laughs> My buddy David checked out an armored vehicle from World War II. It turns out it's mostly a reproduction, but it's still a cool machine. We're taking it for a test drive. This thing is a hell of a lot of fun to drive. I'm definitely interested. So long as this guy keeps in mind, it's not a 100% all original military truck. Hopefully, we'll come together on a price. Yeah! Woo! What do you think? Pretty badass. Um, yeah, it's pretty badass, but what the hell am I gonna do with it? That's my problem I'm thinking about. So realistically, what are you looking to get out of this thing? Well, I know I paid 25 for it, and now that I know from your expert what it's worth, I know that's gone. But I gotta have at least 19 or 20. I mean, it's just not gonna happen, man. I'll, I'll go 11 grand, but it's gonna, be, it's gonna be really difficult to sell. You know, when I first looked at it, cool old World War II collectible army truck, it's not that. I mean, basically, you got a 20-year-old truck here with a bunch of steel bolted to it. Still paid $25,000 for it. What you paid for it is immaterial to me. <laughs> and and it, has, it has value. It has intrinsic value. Limited, limited, limited market. How about $15,000? It won't happen. 
$11,000, I mean, I, I, I'm taking a bath with that. I might as well just park it in my backyard and make a bird bath out of it. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry, man. I just can't. That's what I can do. Well, I appreciate you looking at it. Sorry we couldn't make a deal, man. Kind of disappointed. 11,000 is kind of a slap in the face. I'd rather have the wow factor myself. It's still a cool item. It's a cool piece. I'll park it back in the garage. Fourth of July, come down where we're at and see the parade. I'm always trying to find ways to help my dad and the old man expand the business. I mean, there's a lot of things out there that we've never bought that we can make money on. Today, I got a call about an item we can make a lot of money on, but it's not going to come cheap. So this is the hot air balloon you called me about, huh? Yes, sir, it is. This is, uh, this is the big one. Looks dangerous. <laughs> Buddy, there's more people hurt and killed in cars every day than there are in balloons. Well, there's less balloons in the air. <laughs> well, that's true. I've been in business flying balloons for 25 years. The reason I'm interested in selling this balloon is we have several balloons in our fleet, and we're looking to upgrade to a larger balloon. I mean, I really don't know that much about these. What can you tell me about it? This particular balloon is 250,000 cubic feet. It's designed to carry a pilot and 12 to 14 people. As these are the burners up here. Each burner has its separate feed line coming down from the propane tanks here. Each burner in an ideal world is rated at about 18 million BTU. In comparison, your household heating unit is about 50,000 BTU. Does hot dogs that fast? I want a hot dog. How much are you looking to get for it? Uh, I'd like to get about 45,000 for it. These things can cost a ton of money, but I've done a lot of research, and if we make a ton of money, I don't think my dad or the old man will care. And I gotta convince my father and my grandfather that this is a good decision. We've got upgraded fabric in it, we've got a rapid deflation system in it. You're gonna have to convince me a little more than that. A new balloon like this today would run you about 110,000 with all the options this has on it. So this balloon is in really good shape, it's turnkey, it's ready to go. Would you do 35? I prefer to negotiate when I've got you about a thousand feet in the air. I seem to have a little more bargaining power at that point. I prefer to negotiate on the ground. <laughs> okay. I can do it for 40. I'll tell you what, I can do 38 if you want to do it. All right, I'll do it at 38. All right, deal. I'm happy we got the balloon. I know it's not something we typically deal in, but when all is said and done, we should be able to make 12 grand off this. Because we still haven't found a buyer for the balloon, we decided to take Doug up on his offer and have him pilot it for us. We finally got our first customers, so I sent Chumley over there to help out and make the customers feel more comfortable. You guys excited? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Guys, this is my first time. I'm slightly nervous, so please just bear with me. We should make it through this alive. At 150 a person, it's not really gonna put that big of a dent in the cost, but to be honest, I'm kind of excited about riding in a hot air balloon. Okay, guys, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna heat the air inside the balloon, we're gonna take off. Normally, we fly between 1,000 and 1,500 feet. You guys ready? Yeah, let's do it. Chomp! Chomp, what are you doing, dude? Come on, man! Chomp! I'm sorry. What are you doing, dude? You knew I wasn't even here yet. I thought you were on. I'm sorry. Idiot. I thought we were taking a step in the right direction. But after being up there with just Chum Lee, the customers are probably going to want their money back, and Doug's probably never going to want to work with us again. You guys game to go up to 50,000 feet? Uh, let's just stick with 15 feet. Buddy, we can't clear the buildings at 15 feet. I'm all right with that. What the hell are you doing, moving in? <laughs> How you doing, man? You guys want some burgers? No, nah, but my man Chum Lee wants a hot dog. <laughs> How you doing? Doing well, man. So what do we got here, huh? This is my 1997 Fleetwood Discovery. I got a custom paint job on it, custom awnings, custom electronics. It's really cool, man, but you're taking up like 18 of my parking spots. <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today to sell my Fleetwood Discovery motor coach, and I really hope they buy it. I want to sell it right now because I can't afford to keep my boat and my RV, and I'd rather get rid of the RV. I really want to get 40,000 today. The least I want to take would be probably 30. So does the grill come with it? Oh yeah, definitely. Everything that's set up in this coach right now is gonna stay with it. I've got the uh, refrigerator here, the uh, satellite TV coming off a of splitter feed off the main satellite. Well, the outside's really cool and all, man, but the inside's what counts. Let's go check it out. Okay, let's go.
This thing is huge, and if it's as nice on the inside as it is the outside, I'm definitely interested. Hell, I bet it's bigger than Chum's place. Awesome. This thing is sweet. Yeah, it sleeps six people in here. In the interior of the coach, you got a lot of storage space. Right here, we have a brand new HD TV with surround sound. This is the rear of the coach. Where the magic happens. This is where it is. This is where it happens. Uh, queen size bed. The engine exists underneath the bed here. So, uh, what are you looking to get for this? Well, right now I'm looking to get about 48. It books out in average condition over 40 and brand new. These are about 150,000. This RV is in amazing shape for something that's 13 years old and it's massive. Might be just the thing for the old man to get so he finally retires. We normally don't buy motorhomes, but you're in luck because my dad was telling me last week that he wanted to buy one. So let me call him up and get him down here, see if he's interested in it and see, see if we can do something for you. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. I think they're interested in it, especially because uh, he wants his dad to come and look at it now. Even though they told me they really don't usually buy these type of uh, RVs. Earlier I took a look at an RV and I think it's pretty awesome. But before I make an offer on something so big, I want my dad to come out here and check it out. All right, so I brought him, man. Hey. All right, Pop, so here it is, 97 Fleetwood Discovery, 100,000 miles on the motor, 900 hours on the generator. All right, it's a 97. What's wrong with it right now? <laughs> absolutely nothing, <laughs> I swear. I've got warranties, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You mind if I take a look around? Yeah, no, go ahead, help yourself. Okay. All right, no problems with any electronics? No, that's a climate control, power adjusting system. Gas stove works well. All right, so the washer machine works. Yep, it's a washer-dryer combo. Stand-up shower here with sunlight. All right. So this is the bedroom. You got plenty of storage. Closet here, um, DVD player with satellite. This RV is in great shape, and with more and more retirees moving to Vegas every day, this thing should be an easy sell. So do you want to sell it, or what do you want to do with it? Oh, yeah, I'm looking to sell. How much are you looking to get out of it? Uh, about 38 right now. Yeah, 38 is not going to happen. These things are tough to sell right now. I mean, retired people take these things out and they're nest egg. You're about used to be. retire, aren't you? No. You're at that age. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, you know, I, I'd give you 15 grand for it. 15. I can't take 15. I have over 30,000 put into it myself. Yeah. You know, the thing's also dated, dude. These things are like a computer. They come out with a new model, the old computer, no one wants. I'll do 18,000 on it. Can you give me 20, 28? I'll go 20 and I'm not going to go a dime more. Period. Mm. Okay, 20 grand. All right, you guys go do the paperwork on this, all right? Negotiations didn't go as well as I planned. I wanted 40, uh, but he was pretty firm on what he was gonna offer me. So I'm happy to leave here at least with $20,000.